The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of the Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminus on Orient Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Um, a lot to talk about this week. Obviously, we got um, a lot of basketball to talk about. Obviously, the final week of the regular season for girls basketball. Um, boys basketball, there's two weeks left before the season ends there. Um, but the formula was released there for the boys district. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, let's break down the girls. Of course, the um, districts were released on Sunday. Um, and the matchups, kind of what I thought would be the case when it came to the districts. Um, just the uh, matchups. And we're going to break down the district matchups, obviously. Um, to see where everybody's at. Um, so a lot to talk about when you look at the districts. The division titles in girls basketball have already been wrapped up. Um, Bloomfield Hills um, going to win the blue title this year. Um, the um, game between Oxford and North Farmington, if Oxford can win that game, um, they would share the title with North Farmington. Um, and then the red title, West Bloopia has already locked that up. Um, of course, with Lake Orion's loss to Stony Creek. And... Um, Rochester's lost to Lake Orion. Um, West Bloomfield having um winning the red title um this season. So so um congratulations to division champions this year. Um let's break down the districts. Um obviously, you know, when you look at these districts, some really interesting um scenarios, just some shocking head waves, um, considering in two of the districts. Um, you know, when you look at the team that really's gotten screwed. Um, in this districts, in the districts, um, we're gonna break all that down. Um, let's look at our first district, which is district number, um, which is gonna be district number fifty-eight. This will be at Hazel Park. Um, you have Warren Fitzgerald, Hazel Park, Ferndale, Ferndale University. Um, and um, I gotta figure out who the last one was, but you know, when you look at this district, obviously, you got Warren Fitzgerald's the top seed, um, undefeated this year, had a really nice year. Hazel Park is the number two seed. We know what Coach Dakota Ogles has done. Um, sets the stage up between um, Ferndale and Ferndale University. Um, those are the two things we're going to talk about um, with the winner getting Warren Fitzgerald. Um, when you look at this district, oh, the um, other team in there, I think it's Detroit Old Redford, that's the other team in that district. Um, Oh, no, Warren Lincoln Academy, my bad. Warren Lake Academy. Um, but when you look at this matchup between Ferndale University and Ferndale, I mean, Ferndale University has had a really rough year. I mean, they really have had a, you know, I mean, like, it's been really rough for Coach Brianna Rowe. Um, you know, you know, and I talked to Ferndale University's boys about the Coach Josh Nix about this team, and I wonder what the heck was going on with them. And... You know, he said they were very young, you know, very, very young. I'm going like, wait a minute, what's going on here for you? I mean, like, because normally, you know, they're usually a pretty good team. I mean, like, pretty good program. But they've fallen on some hard times a little bit. And, you know, when you look at Fernandale University, um, kind of very unusual for them to have the season they've been having. Um, so... It's it's been really unusual for them. I mean, the fact they've had games where they've scored in single digit points, um, they haven't really been competitive, and it's really showed. And they're taking on a Ferndale team that you know I'll be straight out honest with you, this team hasn't played a lot of games. And you want to know why you're the A team in this district? You got to look at how many games you played. I mean, you have only played eleven games. You know, you have 22 games. You have 11 wasted opportunities. I mean, 11 wasted opportunities. That tells you something right there. Because you look at the MPR situation. You know, if you would have played more games, you would have had a chance to get that MPR up. And you would not have been playing opening night. And for Coach Keith Paris, that's what I would be saying to you right now. Schedule more games. And instead, you, you won't be in this situation. And that's why you're in this situation. Because you didn't play enough games. And 
You know, so basically that's the bottom line. I mean, yeah, Ferndale, you, Ferndale's five and six, but if this team would have played enough games, you know, more games um, to, you know, to say, you know, I mean, considering, you know, everything that's been going on with, you know, the increase of games, um, less amount of practice time, um, the fact that they opened up the year late, which is mind boggling, but still, there's no excuse here. You could have been a number two seed. You could have passed Hazel Park, but instead, you're the A team and you're playing opening. You're playing in the opening night game. So, if you're Ferndale and you're complaining to me, why don't we have the top two seeds? You have no one to blame but yourself for that. So, you really have no one to blame for that case. You really don't. So. And if the winner of that game will play Warren Fitzgerald, who is the top seed in the district, and we know how good the Spartans have been <coughs> this year. I mean, Warren Fitzgerald's been pretty good this year. Really good this year. I mean, last year, they were atrocious. They were not good. They were bad. And this year, they won the Mac Bronze. Had a um, had a great season, and you look at Hazel Park in there too. I mean, they're they're in there. They won themselves a um, the Mac um silver title. You know, I mean, they won the Mac silver. Got a great draw. They got a great draw. I mean, you know, the possibility of seeing a, a rematch between the Mac silver champions and Mac bronze champions that'll be interesting, but. For Ferndale and Ferndale University in this district, I don't think they're going to get past Warren Fitzgerald. Um, I'd be shocked if they did. Um, but I really just don't see it. You know, for Ferndale, it's their own fault there with the lack of games. Um, Ferndale University this year is just very young. I mean, I give Ferndale University the benefit of the doubt. But as for Ferndale's case, they did it themselves. I mean, that's really what it is. Um. And then let's go to district number um, 30. This is, of course, Harp, where Harper Woods is at. Um, Harper Woods, for some... Harper Woods shockingly got the number two seed in this district. Um, and it's a loaded district, too. I mean, like, you look at teams like Growth Point North, Growth Point South are in there. You got them. St. Clair Shores Lakeview's in there. Um, you know, I, it's going to be interesting because you look at where Harper Woods is at. And that district, you have Roseville is also in there. Roseville plays Gross Point South, which I think that winner, which I think Gross Point South is going to win that one. And that winner is going to play Gross Point North. So you have the Battle of Gross Point there. And then you have St. Clair Shores Lakeview taking on um, Harper Woods. And this is a very dangerous matchup for the Pioneers because of the fact that Harper Woods, you know, they were in the white this year. They had a nice year. Don't get me wrong. But St. Clair Shores Lakeview, yeah, they're down this year. This is a team that made a regional regional semifinal last year. So you look at this matchup, playing the Huskies. The Huskies are a proud program, a really proud program. This is a difficult matchup for the Pioneers because of the fact that I think St. Clair Shores Lakeview has been battle-tested. They've been battle-tested. I mean, yeah, they're not the same team they've been last year. I mean, we're, I mean, they had a they had a tough loss to Utica Eisenhower. We're going to talk Utica Eisenhower in a minute, in a couple minutes, obviously, because I think that um that win against the Huskies for Utica Eisenhower got them the number two seed in their district. Um which put um, Rochester in a really bad note, so we'll talk that in a minute. Um, but for Harper Woods, you know, I don't know if the schedule has necessarily helped them. I mean, I don't know, you know, when you play, I mean, this year you've had some, your non-conference wasn't the greatest this year. I mean, yeah, you had that tough loss to Detroit Mumford. I mean, but then you play in the white, you know, you got you got crushed by Oxford a couple times. You got to play North Farmington. Um, 
You got to play, you playing the likes of Sea Home Athens. Um, very competitive with both teams there. Uh, very competitive with Adams, which, you know, when I look at Adams this year, they've been really struggling this year. Um, and then you look at Royal Oak, obviously, Berkeley. Um, you know, teams that you do match up with. But I think for Harper Woods, this is going to be a much difficult matchup, to say the least. And if Harper Woods does get by St. Clair Shores Lakeview, then you gotta have that. Then you're probably gonna have to deal with the host school, which is Gross Point North. Um, they are loaded. They have players like Natalie Babcock, Jenna Winneko, Winneko. Um, I mean, Gross Point North, and then you have um Julie Ariat. Um, so it's a difficult situation for Harper Woods to say the least in that district. It really is. Um, do I think Harper Woods has a chance to win that district? Yeah, but is it likely? Probably not. Um, I'd be shocked if they did win that district. Because I think Rose Point North is the, is the real deal. I really do. Um, so when you look at that scenario, but they got to get by St. Clair Shores Lakeview first. That, that, is, that is first thing priority. Because if they don't get by the Huskies, then we're not talking district final. And that matchup is difficult for them. That is going to be a very difficult match for them because St. Clair Shores Lakeview, they are a good team. They are a really, really good team. Um, so it'll be a good test for them when they play. It'll be a really good test for them. Um, let's go now to district number, I think, 29 at 28 here. Um, this is a district where you have Troy, Athens, Avondale, Utica, Ford, Utica, and um and um Sterling Heights, Stevenson. Um, this will be at Avondale. Um, I look at this district, and you know, people look at the matchups, and they have um, you have Troy Athens taking on Utica, Sterling Heights, Stevenson taking on um, taking on Avondale, and then um, that winner's taking on Utica Ford. Um, when I look at this matchup, when I look at this district, and I say, okay, um, obviously Sterling Heights, Stevenson taking on um, Avondale. Avondale's been really disappointing this year. I mean, I thought, you know, yes, they did lose a lot this year with Reagan Lawrence and Savannah Schmidt, but I didn't expect Avondale to be, you know, be to really struggle like they did this year. I thought they would be better than what they showed me, but it looks like they have not. Um... And then you look at, of course, playing Sterling Heights Stevenson. Of course, Sterling Heights Stevenson, they've had they've had a tough year this year. I mean, yeah, I know they lost their head coach Vance Kirkwood, you know, who's now at Mount Clemens coaching boys basketball. <laughs> but they managed to start putting some wins together a little bit. Um, just struggling to adjust when you look at Sterling Heights Stevenson this year. Um, you know, obviously when you look at those two teams, um, I mean, like it's going to be a tough road for both those teams if they were to get if they were to get by. Um, you know, you know, because the next round you have Utica Ford, and we know how good Utica Ford is. Um, Utica Ford just lost a really tough matchup to um the other night. I mean, to Gross Point North, they lost to um to um you know when you look at Utica Ford, we know how good they are. I mean, the Falcons are a good team. I mean, they got size in, in the interior. They got proven guards, proven experience. Um, you know, I think Utica Ford, you know what I mean, with the way that they've been playing, you can afford two. Um, like this, put the word two in there because, you, you know, it's Utica Henry Ford number two. Um, so it's a difficult matchup, to say the least, um, for the winner of Avondale and um, Sterling Heights Stevenson because you got a very good proven team in Utica Ford, well coached staff there. Um, and then on the other side of that bracket, you got Utica. We know how um, you know, they're a very good program under Coach Tom McDonald. They're gonna take on Troy Athens. Of course, Troy Athens got the number two seed, and they were just decimated with injuries. I mean, just absolutely decimated with injuries. Um, so I'm very curious to see is can Troy Athens get healthy before the start of the postseason? 
because what's going to help them is they have that extra day to prepare, you know, and that's going to help them get themselves ready for the postseason. And I think that's a good thing for them because Troy Athens, you know, obviously the injury bug has really killed them. You can, it really has showed in the white this year. I mean, their injury situation. Um, so I will be curious to see how the Red Ox respond in the postseason, considering, yes, you got the two seed. That is a big deal. But it's a difficult matchup, to say the least, with Utica. Um, so if this is a team, if there's a team that has to be an upset alert, um, Troy Athens really is the one that has to be, considering the fact that you're playing a Utica team that's really struggled this year. Um, but, you know, the postseason, it's a totally different animal. Um, so if you're Troy Athens, you know, but then if you win that game, then you're looking at a difficult match for you to Ford. Um, I think Utica Ford does come out of this district because of the experience. Um, but they could have some issue. I mean, like, maybe with Troy Athens. I mean, like, you know, but if Troy Athens was healthy, I know they would have issues. Ford would have issues. But at the end of the day, I just think Utica Ford just too much experience, been more battle tested. Um, I think the Falcons do move on in this district to the regional. So we'll see. I mean, like, like I said, anybody can be beat on any, on any given day. So, but it's a tough, t- it's a tough task. You know what I mean? Especially for a team like Troy Athens, who has been, um, who's been going through a lot. And then Abaddon, we know has been really disappointing this season. Um, yes, they got home court, but like I said, Avondale has to be, um, but like I said, you know, for Avondale, yes, it's a new start of a new season, but at the end of the day here, you got to give the edge to, um, you got to give the edge to, um, you know, to the Utica Ford in this one against Troy Athens. So something to really keep an eye on going forward there in that one. Um, let's go to District 27. Um, this is a very interesting district. Um, you got Birmingham, Marion, plus Grove, Seaholm, um, Olympia Hills and Troy. Now, an interesting storyline did come out of this district was the fact that Bloomfield Hills is the blue champion this year. But the NPR really hurt them. I mean, they were at 504, and Seaholm, who's had a rough year themselves, was at 506. So that was a stunner for me that that Seaholm ended up taking the number two seed. And Bloomfield Hills now has to be the A team and has a much more difficult matchup than and a more difficult pass to get there. Um, so when you really look at this district, you got Bloomfield Hills now having to play Groves in the first round. That winner gets Birmingham Marion, who's had a struggling year themselves. But you know, let's not forget this team's played a tough schedule. They in the Catholic League, they also have home court as well. Um, so you're basically saying and then on the other side you have Troy taking on Seaholm, which if you're Troy, that is a much favorable matchup for you. Because you the Troy's played in a really tough division this year. The red is a vicious division. Seaholm hasn't been the greatest in the white this year. So I think for Troy. This is a perfect opportunity for you because if you would have played Bloomfield Hills, I think playing Bloomfield Hills would have been a much more difficult matchup for you than having to play a team like Bloomfield Hills, who I thought would be, if it was Bloomfield Hills in Troy, I would have took Bloomfield Hills because I know how good that team is. They are a good team. But the fact of the matter is that the fact they played in the blue um, really hurt them. Um... You know, and then they're, I mean, like, obviously, you know, it's not Coach Chris and Massey's fault. But that's the situation they've been dealt with. And then you look at, of course, now Bloomby Hills, they're playing Groves. Obviously, Groves with Caitlin Sanders and Sierra Rocco. Um, I mean, like, obviously, you have a little Gallagher there. Um, Cameron Little there. Um, it's been a rough year for them. So, it'll be interesting to see what Groves does in this one. In this tur- in this um in the postseason, considering now they got to play on that Monday, and that winner is going to take on Birmingham Marion, and Marion's had a tough year, but they do feature one of the top players in the state, Mackenzie Swanson. 
So, you know, and she just committed to Butler. So, this is a difficult draw for Groves and Bloomby Hills, considering you got to play Birmingham Mary. Now, can Birmingham Mary get beat? Absolutely. I mean, I think Blue. I mean, like Bloomby Hills just played them, lost by 15, 50 to 35 the other day against them. Groves has a shot because if Sierra Rocco shoots well, Caitlin Sanders has to be on her game. Um, and we know how Caitlin Sanders' game is. Obviously plays very similar to, to that of Kevin Garnett when he was with the Minnesota Timberwolves. That's how I can view Caitlin Sanders' game. Similar to that. Um, but they've got to get, but there's got to be other options besides Sanders and Rocco. They've got to step up if Groves were to move on past Bloomfield Hills <laughs> and have a chance against Birmingham Marion on the road. It's virtually going to be a road game for them. Um, so that's what I'm seeing right now is if they have a shot in this game, I mean, like they do have a shot. I mean, like, I mean, like, I think Groves can be, Groves is your most dangerous team in this district right now, in that district. And then on the matchup between Troy and Seaholm, you know, I don't know if Seaholm's seen a player like Diamond Prince or Reagan Zyder. I don't know if they, if, if Coach Chris Manchester's team has seen him. I mean, yeah, you got Addy Flynn there. You got Shane Manchester there. I mean, like, I mean, obviously, you know, that's going to be an interesting match, but I think Troy's played a tougher schedule. So it wouldn't surprise me if Troy makes the district final. And could you just imagine with how rough that team, that season's been for Coach Julius Porter and to get to the district final? That would say a lot you know, for Troy, considering, you know, the fact that this program, yes, brighter days are ahead. Obviously, looking at Macy Zyder, who's only a seventh grader right now, um, could make some noise when she gets to Troy High in, in two years. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about her a lot over there at Troy. Um, but Diamond Prince, I think could it could be in line for a big postseason. I, I just, I could see it. Because you know, especially in this game against Seaholm, because I don't know if if um, Seaholm has seen athletic guards. You know what I mean? Considering, you know, yeah, they've seen Sylvia Leffler. Yes, they've seen Sylvia Rob. Um, but I don't think they've seen as anybody as talented as Diamond Prince would be or Regan Zyder would be. Yes, they're young, but I think Troy's got a great chance here to get to the district final. I, I, I do. Don't get me wrong. Um, so the team I see winning is district. Um, I think Birmingham Marion wins this district because of, um, home court because of Swanson. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if Groves does upset him. I mean, like it really wouldn't surprise me there. Um, I mean, I think Troy's got a great shot to get there. I mean, like I, I really do. So, but everything right now stands out to be Birmingham Marion's district to lose. Um, so we'll see. Um, District 26, this will be at, um, North Farmington. Of course, yeah, Farm Tales Mercy, Farmington, um, Detroit Henry Ford, um, Southfield Arts and Tech are in here. Um, this is an interesting district. I mean, you know, people are going to say, well, everybody's saying, everybody's already putting in Farm Tales Mercy and North Farmington in the district final. Um, North Farmington's got a really tricky game with a and in the um, in the district semifinal, um, but North Farm. I mean, like Farmington and Troy Henry Ford. Um, yeah, I think Farmington wins that, and I think that um, you know, it's gonna be Farmington versus Farmington's Mercy. I really like the Marlins in that one to move on to the district final, but I it's a dangerous game for Coach Jeff Simpson because these two teams played earlier in November, and. You know, I talked to Sean Cotter about this and about this matchup. And, I, and he told me, you know, for for Raider Nation, beware of Southfield. I mean, Southfield Arts and Tech, they got their fast team. They're quick guards. You got Christian Banks, Kamira Page, um, Jalen Austin in the interior. Um, but these two teams played earlier in the year. 
And A&T had a lead on North Farmington in the third quarter of that game. And, but really what helped them was Sal Leffler and Penelope Curry had to bail them out in that game. So, but I can't trust A&T defense. I, just, I can't trust this team defense because A&T gives up a ton of points. They've given up 80 to West Bluebird. They gave up 90 to Belleville. Um, I think North Farms, they, I think they put 60 on them. I mean, like, I mean, like, this team gives up a lot of points. I mean, it is clear as day. I mean, have they, the style they play with, obviously, you got to win games high scoring. That's the style they want to go with. That's fine. But when you come in the postseason, there has to be a defensive emphasis here. I think Jeff Simpson's team has that. I mean, obviously, what they've been going through. The undefeated season, yeah. I mean, like, you know, obviously, that's a big deal. I mean, Sal left for some playing really good basketball. Penelope Curry's been playing really good basketball. They've gotten third scoring, third option scoring. Or it's been Hannah Hart, Eliza Muller, um, Athea Jihad. Um, I mean, they've gotten options this year. And that's a good sign for Coach Jeff Simpson and his team. Um, so people are going to say, okay, do you think A&T beats North Farms in, in the District 7 Finals? I don't see it happening. I think North Farmington goes into the district final. We're going to talk that big showdown with Farm Tills Mercy in the district final, um, which that would be a heck of a matchup. Um, the only thing I'm very concerned about is the matchup inside for North Farmington, if that were the case. Um, but, you know, I don't think, I don't think Farm Tills Mercy has an answer for Sal Leffler. I mean, like, and that says something right there. Because Leffler, you know, Leffler's had monster games where she's dominated people. I mean, really. I mean, I think the Marlins will have their hands full. And when they played Ann Arbor, um, Father Gabriel Richard, they lost that one by 14 in the Catholic League final. And they were tortured. With their, guards, their guards absolutely tortured the Marlins. So... It's going to be a clash of different styles. Home court matters in this game. Home court matters. I mean, like, I know I don't like to do projections on the pod. I really don't. But in this district here, I could seriously see an upset brewing. I really do. I mean, like, it's hard for me to trust Farm Hills Mercy in this district. It really is. I know Coach Gary Morris very well. I know his style of play. I know what he wants to do. I mean, you got he's got some really good players on that team. But Jeff Simpson is a strategist. He is a strategist. And he will have this team ready for Farm Tales Mercy. He will have this team ready. Um, no doubt about it. Um that's if they get there, they get by Southfield. Um, of course, Southfield Arts and Tech, we know, is a trap game for North Farmington. So, we'll see. I mean, like, you know, North Farmington, the way they've been playing right now, I mean, like, you know, obviously, if they finish the year undefeated, um, they're going to be coming in there with a lot of confidence. So, we'll see. We will see what happens there. Um, district number 25, um, this will be over at Berkeley. You got Berkeley, Detroit Renaissance, um, Royal Oak, Oak Park, um, and Detroit Mumford's in here. Um, the, um, two Detroit teams have the two seeds, um, you know, which means Berkeley plays Oak Park. That winner's going to take on Renaissance and then, and then you have Royal Oak taking on Detroit Mumford. Um, People are going to ask me about this district last year and look at, obviously, what happened. Because Berkeley upset Detroit Renaissance last year in the district final. Um, I don't know if this team is built for this version of Detroit Renaissance like they were last year. Um, obviously, you know, Detroit Renaissance, one of the, um, I think they're number two in the state right now behind West Bluefield. Um... When you look at the Phoenix, um, I think they're a little bit better this year than they were last year. 
obviously Christian Sanders, you have Nevaeh Otis, you have um, Anaya Hardy. Um, when I look at Renaissance, they have the team, you know, to have a deep run. But to something with Detroit Renaissance, you know, what something always trips them up. Um, and I think, you know, in this district, they could have some interesting issues. Berkeley's got a trap game with Oak Park. Oak Park's been playing good basketball lately. I mean, Chantel Corson's done a really nice job of that team. Um, and then you look at Berkeley, obviously, the year they've had. I mean, it started off badly for Berkeley, for Coach Cody Faulkner's team. It started off badly. But they've managed to right the ship. Um, and then you look at Royal Oak taking on Detroit Mumford. Yeah, Detroit Mumford's a good team. But they haven't seen a team or or, or brilliant strategist like Brian Zapata. I'll tell you. I think, I think Roy, don't be surprised if Royal Oak beats Detroit Mumford. I wouldn't surprise anybody. Because normally when you look at Detroit, Detroit like teams like to go up and down. They don't like the zone it. They don't like the, they don't like to play the zone. They don't like, you know, teams when they slow it down. I think Royal Oak's going to do that in this game. You look at last year, what Berkeley did against Detroit Mumford. I mean, Berkeley slowed it down. I mean, like, yeah, National Loon had a big game there. But they did just enough to beat Detroit Mumford. I mean, Detroit Mumford's a good team. And they got a really good player on that team. And there's a couple good players on that team. They're well coached, too. Um, but I think Royal Oak, yeah, they're a young team. They don't really have a true score. Um, but I think they can do, but they have a system in place there. They have a defense for a system there. So I think Royal Oak could beat Detroit Montford. I think they can beat them. And then on the flip side, I think Berkeley can beat Oak Park, play Detroit Montford, or play Detroit Renaissance. But this is where it gets real tricky because you know Detroit Renaissance wants to destroy Berkeley. They want to. What happened last year in Detroit on their home floor when Berkeley upset them, don't think they haven't remembered what happened. I mean, yes, there's a new coach in Deshaun Wood in there. But this is what makes it very difficult. Those players remember that game. They remember that game. So if you're Berkeley, this is a very difficult scenario for you. The fact that you have them in the district semifinal. You could see them in the district semifinal. And a lot of those girls that played on that, on that team from last year are still there. You know, the only exception is Ashley Loon. So that's, that's going to be difficult. And you know Detroit, Mumper, Detroit Renaissance is going to be motivated for you. You know it. So <laughs> if you're Coach Cody Feltner, you have got to develop a game plan, you know, because I think Detroit Renaissance is better than they were last year. So it's going to be difficult. I mean, they're undefeated right now. Well, then again, Detroit Renaissance, they won the Detroit Public School League title last year, but they lost in the district final. So I'm very curious to see how this matchup is going to look like. Really curious. Because it wouldn't surprise me if Detroit Renaissance wants to put at least 70 or 80 on them. It really wouldn't surprise me. And if Berkeley can't, you know, Berkeley, we know that they, they, there's times they tend to struggle offensively. And they're going to have to play well defensively. Really are. If they can have that same game plan like that and extend it more, they might have a chance to do it again. Who knows? I mean, it's going to be a tough matchup, to say the least. I mean, everybody's looking at a possible battle of the Detroit District Final. Um, If that's the case, Renaissance wins. Too much experience, too much size up top. Um, 
I think it's, I mean, like, I think Detroit Renaissance, the way they're playing right now, you know, they got a lot of confidence. I mean, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in that district. Um, let's go now to District 7. Um, this is at Lakeland. You got Lakeland, Wall Lake Northern, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Western, and the defending Division One state champion, West Bloomfield, is in this district. Um, West Bloomfield's got the top seed. Wall Lake um, Northern's got the two. Um, Wall Lake um, Central takes on um, Wall Lake um, Western with Lakeland taking on um, with Lakeland taking on the um, two seed, which is Wall Lake Northern. Um, I look at this district and I say, okay, you know, if you're West Bloomfield, you know, obviously you've had a great year. You've had a really good year. And now you have a chance to at least get healthy for the postseason run. I don't really see any team in this district giving you problems. Probably the only team I could see maybe giving, giving them problems is Wald Lake um, Northern. Um, and I've seen Northern play. Um, Lakeland and Northern will be a very interesting game there. Um, I just don't see Wald Lake Western or Wald Lake Central giving West Bloomfield hardly anything. It wouldn't surprise me if West Bloomfield scores 80 in that. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, bottom line is, I just don't see anybody really touching West Bloomfield in this district. I just don't see it. I mean, probably the only team that's close enough that could give them a game, maybe, is Wild Lake North. Um, maybe Lakeland, but I just don't see it. I really don't see it. And I think that's unfortunate. Um, the fact that Back in June when the MHA put West Bluefield in the um in that district with um with the Wild Lakes. The only saving grace, you know what I mean, no offense, is Milford. You know, Milford's in a different district this year. Um I think they're with Heartland, Howell, Brighton. Um you know, out west, going out west in the Livingston County. Um I think it's going to be really interesting to say the least how that's going to go, but I just don't really see anybody touching West Bloomfield. I'd be shocked if somebody did touch West Bloomfield. I would be absolutely stunned if somebody touched West Bloomfield because, you know, they really haven't been touched all year long. The only team that's been close to touching them you know, in the red this year has been Rochester. I mean, Rochester was not for, they gave him a game. They gave him a game, you know, until the middle of the part of the third quarter. I mean, we know how good West Bloomfield is. Obviously, we have both Davis sisters, both Hendrick sisters. Destiny Washington had a nice year. Um, Abe Lords had a nice year for um, Coach Joe McAllister. I mean, it's going to be a tough matchup. Be a really tough matchup. Um, let's go to district number four now. This will be at Lapeer. Um, you got um Davison taking on Holly. Um, that winner's taking on Grand Blank, who got the top seed in that district, and then you have Oxford and Lapeer. Um, I think the matchup kind of really fits where it is because of the fact that, you know, yes, it's at Lapeer, but you got Oxford. Oxford's a really good team. This year, you got Allison Hofstetter, you got um, Miranda and Epco, Sophia Rob, Peyton Richter. Um, I think they've done a really nice job developing that bench this year. Lexi Yankees been playing well. You got um, Allison Feeney's had a nice stretch. Um, Brady Ellings had a nice stretch for Oxford. Um, going up against the Lapeer team, that I think Lapeer's better this year. I think they got one of the Fer I think you got Ferguson up there. Um, who was a really good player there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes with Lapeer, considering both those teams played each other this year. Um, Oxford did beat Lapeer earlier in the year over at Oxford. Um, and then you look at the possibility of having to play Grand Blank. Um, 
you know, you look at Grand Blank, you know, they should get by Davison or Holly. Holly's better than people think this year, obviously. You know, last year they went winless, but le this year they've had about two wins this year. Um, Davison's been just absolutely atrocious this year. Just, I was disappointed when I saw the record. I mean, I thought Davison would be better. I mean, but I just can't believe how things have gone. I mean, with for them, I, I mean, like, I just didn't think that Davison would be as bad as they've been. I mean, this year. And looking at the possibility of having to play Grand Blank, um, which I think that's going to be a blowout either way, this district's basically looking like it's going to be Oxford and Grand Blank. And this will be the third time these two teams have played. And Grand Blank's won the last two against Oxford in the postseason. Um, <clears throat> as I said a couple weeks ago on the, um, on, the, uh, on the special ON TV Fish Drive podcast um, with Ian, um, it's a difficult road for Oxford without in the Vail Wood. And it's going to be. Because you don't really have that true interior threat. I mean, Peyton Richter's a good interior threat, but you're going to need more from, you're going to need a player like Allison Feeney, Lexi Yankee. They have to be, they have to step up in this game. Because you know, because you know you got Winamco, you got Huffsetter, Richter's going to have to step up for sure. Um, and the play a team like Grand Blank, obviously, was loaded with Jaden McCray. He got, um, Chelsea Bishop there. Their interior's decent. Um, Grand Blank's in a nice year. But if there's any sort of hope here for Oxford, look at the Motor City Round Ball Classic game between Grand Blank and Clarkson. Yeah, Grand Blank won that game. But they were held to 33 points in that game against a very good Clarkson team. And Clarkson held them to 33. And Grand Blank's a team that normally averages around 45, 50 points a game. So, there is a chance for Oxford. There really is. But Oxford's going to have to play well against Grand Blank. They're going to have to play well, especially defensively. You know, so that is something to really watch for. <laughs> In that district, really something to watch for. Um, let's go to District 6, um, and then we'll talk District 5. Um, District 6, you have, um, yeah, Pontiac taking on, um, Waterford Kettering. That winner's taking on Lake Orion. And then you have, um, Waterford Mott against Clarkston. Um, when you look at Pontiac against Waterford Kettering, um, this is going to be interesting. Because Pontiac's really struggled all year. Both these teams have really struggled. Um... <laughs> Waterford Kettering's been able to put points up this year. Um, you know, they've won one game this year. That was against Waterford Mott. Um, I mean, like, this is going to be just yikes. And then that winner's taking on Lake Orion. Yikes. I mean, and you look at the Dragons, you know, be, being a team like Roch, being a team of, in, Roch in Rochester without four players? That says something. That really does say something. Um, you know, coming off a tough loss of Stony Creek, um, which I thought that game was terribly officiated in that game. Um, but for them to bounce back and play like that against Stony Creek, uh, against Rochester, without four players, that says a lot. Really does. Um... And then on the flip side, you have Waterford Mott against Clarkston. Um, I think Mott could give them a game, but not likely. I mean, this is this district here, as I said a couple weeks ago, this is going to be Lake Orion Clarkson part three. Um, always hard to beat a team three times in one year, especially at the opponent's court. But Lake Orion's been able to do that. <laughs> um, been able to win at Clarkston. And during the season, and it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting, considering, you know, obviously, you know, what Lake Orion's got. Lake Orion's a senior-heavy team. 
Um, Clarkson, we know, is pretty young this year. Um, but they got their fair share of good players as well. With Eliana Roback, you got um, Mario Manzer, you got Ava Hernandez, Emily Valencia, um, Ellery Hernandez, um, Claire Walker. I mean, you know, they, they're, they're a good team. I mean, Clarkson's a really good team. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, they're a very good team. <laughs> but it's going to be interesting. I mean, everything's looking more and more like it's going to be Lake Ori and Clarkson Park 3 there in that district. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then our last dish we're going to talk about, this is the one I've been looking forward to over at Rochester District 5. Um, the matchups are really interesting. You got Adams versus Stony Creek. That winner's taking on Rochester. And then you have um, Romeo and Utica Eisenhower. Um, if you're Rochester, if you're Bill Thurston, if you, I mean, you got proven players like Ava Williams, Stevie Norgrove, Abby Pleasant, um, you know, and then you have, um, especially in the interior, also with them, Kylie Robinson and Alice Max, and you just got the number one seat. <laughs> you got the top seat. But, looking at the fact that you have to deal with Stony Creek, and there's Stony Creek's the B team in that district, you got to be saying, are you freaking kidding me? And then you have Utica Eisenhower, who's got the two seed in there, and they're red hot right now. I mean, and, you know, Romeo and Rochester Adams, they're no slouches either. This is a very tough district. I mean, for Rochester, you know, the realization of playing Stony Creek's real. I mean, you just played them in the crosstown. Stony Creek version was the better team. They were virtually the better team. You had to hang in there until, you know, you got you um, had to come back from five down with less than a minute to go, forced overtime. And then you won in the overtime. So this is going to be an interesting matchup because you have Rochester has the size inside. You have, obviously... The twin, you have the Twin Towers, Kylie Robinson and Alice Mack. You also have the, um, and then you have, of course, the guards matchups interesting. Because Rochester was Steven Norgrove, Natalie Race. You have um, Ava Williams there at the three. You have, um, you know, then you have Abby Pleasant as well. And then on the flip side, you have with Stony Creek, Mia Carson, Sydney La Sarah LaPrairie. Um, you know, this is going to be interesting. I thought Coach Kellen James had a great game plan against, against, um, Rochester in the crosstown. Slow the game down, you know, which is normally what you want to do against them. You know, well, against Rochester, if you speed them up, you know what I mean? You're in good shape. But if you slow it down, that kind of works in Rochester's favor a little bit. Because, obviously, with Mack and Robinson. But it'll be interesting to see how this goes, considering this will be the third time these teams have played. You know, it could all change with the weather situation. Um, but we'll see. Curious to see how Thursday's schedule is going to look. Really curious to see how Thursday's schedule is going to look for, um, for the following week. So, but... Just imagine having to play Stony Creek. Stony Creek should get by should get by Rochester Adams. They should. Um, I mean, they already played once in the year, and Stony Creek, um, you know, had no issue with Adams. And then on the other side, you have Utica Eisenhower and Romeo. You want to know why Utica Eisenhower is a two seed? It's pretty simple. They beat St. Clair Shores Lakeview. It's pretty simple. And they had just enough in the NPR. So, you know, that win against Lake Orion was huge at the time for Stony Creek, but that win for, for Utica Eisenhower against Lakeview was the difference of, 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 um, of the Eagles getting the two seed and not the Cougars. That would have been a better matchup and a better scenario for, Stony, for Rochester if that would have been the case. Then Stony Creek would have had to play Utica Eisenhower in the next round and... 
and then you know Rochester would have would have had a good path to the district final. Now you got to deal with obviously having to play Stony Creek in the district semi- district semifinal, and if and if you get by that, playing Utica Eisenhower in the district final. So it's a tough task for Rochester. It's going to be a real tough task for them. I mean. Basically, you know, basically, you look at last year's district. Now, that last year's district, the only difference was Lake Orion was in that district. Lake Orion was the A team that year, had to beat Stony Creek and Rochester, along with Rochester Adams, to win that district. Stony Creek's virtually in the same situation as Lake Orion was. You know, they're in the same situation. I mean, I still think in that district, you know, three teams can win that district. I mean, Rochester, we know the history with them. They made the district final four straight years and lost all four of them, including one on their home floor to Utica. So there's a lot on the line for Rochester in this game. There is a lot on the line for them. I mean, obviously, and you look at Utica Eisenhower, you got player like Ava Sack there. You got um, you got Devin um, I can't remember her last name, but um, but they got some good players on that team over at Utica Eisenhower. So it's gonna be a tough sell. Be very interesting over there at Rochester. But for Rochester, the for Rochester, you know, it's a tough sell for them. It's gonna be very tough for them. Yes, you got the number one seed, but it's a tough situation for you because now you're going to have to go through Stony Creek, likely, and then if you get there, you got to go through Utica Eisenhower. I mean, is it doable for Rochester? Absolutely. <coughs> but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, Before we go, obviously, we're going to re- look at the boys' um bracket. Obviously, that got released. Um, You know, of course, a lot of these teams are in 16 districts. Um, of course, I have this on my blog at Saginaw Bay at Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um, a lot of a lot of teams are in either a five team district or in a six team district. Um, the five team district, of course, you have the C taking on the B. That winner's taking on the one seed, and then the um, A team is playing the um, the um, two seed in the um, semifinal. And then the six team, obviously, you got A versus B. That winner's taking on the one seed. D versus C, that one is taking on the two seed. Um, a lot of districts right now are really tight right now. When you look at the MPR right now, um, the one at Utica Eisenhower, of course, from Lake Orion, Utica Eisenhower right now is bound for the two seed right now. Um, and then you look at other districts where I think it's pretty much set in stone. Obviously, the Clarkson district, I think it's locked. I think the Ferndale district's locked. Um, that's a five teamer as well. Um, over at um the Ferndale's over at Hazel Park for their district. Um I mean a lot to play for. I mean, obviously you look at obviously the um the district over at Bloomfield Hills. I mean, like that one's gonna be interesting as well. Um, with both Catholic League teams right now are seated right now. I mean, obviously the matchups you're looking at possibly Groves versus Seaholm, and then you're looking at possible um West Bloomfield versus um Bloomfield Hills matchup in the um First round, I mean, like, just some crazy, insane matchups in those districts. Um, North Farmington's district, obviously, is locked, um, I think, right now. Um, you know, of course, the Troy district, I think that one's locked right now. I think Troy, well, th- there's a battle between you to control Athens for the two seed there to keep a close eye on there. Um, just, um, just a lot of storylines. Of course, Harper Woods. Going to likely be in a battle with um, Gross Point North, even though I think they're going to play each other regardless um, with their district. So a lot to play for when you really look at the district seeds right now. Um, of course, they have one more week. The matchups will be released on Sunday. Um, so that's something to really watch for. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, before I sign off here, of course, you know, I'm a little worried about the weather situation coming up on um Wednesday night and Thursday, make sure everybody stays safe, um, you know, from freezing rain, obviously. Um, 
But we'll see what happens weather-wise if we play Thursday. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, so something to keep an eye on. Um, you know, with Mother Nature and all that coming up. And, um, you know, and, of course, we talked the postseason. Obviously, the girls' match has been released. Um, we're going to talk the boys' matchups next week, obviously. Um, you know, so we're going to see what happens going forward as we head into the um, final stretches of the season. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at sangonbay4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information. Um, obviously, um, a lot going on around basketball. Of course, some cheerleading districts. Of course, um, several OA teams are in that. Um, hockey districts are going to... Hockey regions are going to start pretty soon. Um, so we're going to break those down. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. See you. God bless everybody.